Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a little look at the Namimno Express LRS 2.4 GHz kit, or otherwise known as Flash. So we have the JR Bay module here, what they call the Black Pearl. We have the standard receiver, and we also have the receiver with the ceramic antenna. I'm going to be primarily focusing on the transmitter module and I'll also be detailing the steps required to update the firmware on this device as it's slightly different. Some of the other modules such as the Happy Model, the DIY transmitters, due to the fact that this is using an STM32 chip instead of an ESP chip. The receivers themselves basically perform exactly the same as the receivers from the other manufacturers as well as the DIY version in that they will be updated in the same methods. If I pop this next to a happy model receiver you can obviously see it's about twice the size. It's again slightly larger than the Ghost Atto receiver and more on a par with Crossfire Nano receiver. As I mentioned before there are two versions. There's the one with the UFL connection to use an antenna such as the included one here and then there is the one with the ceramic antenna in the same way that the other manufacturers such as Happy Model with their EP2 receiver are using. On the subject of antennas I do find that this one is a lot more robust than the Happy Model one. The Happy Model one is, is very flexible and whilst it's not actually caused me any problems there is the chance that maybe in a crash or a hard landing of some sort that you may bend it upwards into a prop or something like that whereas these are much more rigid and less likely to cause problems such as that. They're also firmer than the Ghost QT antenna. I am actually using one of the standard receivers in one of my fixed wings, my AR Wing Pro. I've had no issues with it whatsoever in terms of overheating or any issues in terms of poor range. I've yet to try this one with the ceramic antenna, but I don't expect there will be any sort of issue with that either. So I'm going to put the receivers to one side and move over to the transmitter module and discuss that. So the transmitter module is very well built, very robust. It makes a solid connection in the JR bay. There doesn't seem to be any play of any kind. So this transmitter module has the capability of going up to one watt output power. Though really, unless you're flying to the moon, I can't see the need for that. 100 milliwatt is more than sufficient for most purposes. It does have a fan here. So if you are running any of the higher output powers, that is an active fan which will come on and keep the module cool. There is an XT30 connection here so if you are running output powers probably above 250 milliwatt, maybe even above 100 milliwatt, it will be recommended to provide some auxiliary power so that it doesn't drain the power of your transmitter too quickly. So the Black Pearl antenna seems well constructed. There's a little bit of flex in the coax. It does use an SMA connector which most of the manufacturers do appear to be using for the Express RS transmitter modules for some reason as the standard would really be RPSMA and that's what I'm using on my DIY transmitter what Ghost uses and also what Tracer uses it's just something to be mindful of if you are to buy any third party antennas there is a status LED here which lights up when the module is powered but the one thing I do feel it is missing is a USB connection as this would provide an additional simple way of updating the module. It does support updating through via Wi-Fi but to update this via Wi-Fi it does use a slightly different method to DIY module, the Happy Model version, the Beta FPV version as this is using an STM32 chip instead of the ESP chip. The ESP chip has Wi-Fi built in, this STM32 doesn't. To get around that there is something called ESP Wi-Fi Backpack. What you essentially do is connect to the backpack Wi-Fi, then you connect the backpack to your 
home network, you enter your password for your home Wi-Fi, and then the backpack will connect as a client to your home Wi-Fi. Then you can just browse to the module over your normal Wi-Fi at home, as opposed to connecting to the module directly every time you want to flash it. So there are pros and cons of that. Obviously, because it connects to your home Wi-Fi, it's simple. You don't need to connect to it as a wireless access point every time you want to flash. However, in order to connect to your home Wi-Fi, it needs to be within a reasonable vicinity of your router because the strength of the antenna is very weak. I did initially have a struggle with this to get it updated because there was a flaw in the way that the Wi-Fi updating was applying the firmware. It would apply the firmware at the start of the addressing which would override the bootloader portion on the chip, essentially soft bricking the device. So my initial flash, I actually opened this up, soldered to the UART pins inside using my ST link and flashed that method. But the devs have identified the issue and the latest release, version 1.1, actually does allow you to just flash without any issue and I'll show that process later. You could work around this issue by manually entering the address at which to start the flash prior to clicking the flash button in the updater, but with the latest changes you won't need to worry about that. Other than the initial flashing complications, I've had no complaints, I've not had any fail saves or any issues, no, as I mentioned before, no issues with connectivity to my transmitter. With the stop antenna, I've easily been able to outrun my video. I've not had any fail safes. It doesn't appear to run too hot, particularly on the lower power levels. And then as I mentioned before, with the higher power levels, you would get the fan to help with cooling anyway. It connects to the Namimno hardware, Happy Model hardware, DIY hardware, absolutely fine. So honestly, other than a couple of niggles with the flashing, with the fact that it uses an SMA connector and I've got a load of RPSMA antennas. The fact that it doesn't have USB is generally been a solid product. The rest of the video is going to be related to flashing with the latest firmware, which is 1.1.0 using the Wi-Fi method. With the module in your transmitter and providing it power, as you can see here, the LED is on. That's all we need to do to get the Wi-Fi started. So the initial connection, you'll need to go into the, connect to the ESP Wi-Fi manager, find and connect to your home Wi-Fi. And once it's connected, you won't need to do that step for subsequent connections. If for any reason you need to connect it to a different SSID, you'll have to follow the same steps again. The one thing to note there is if you're in range of the Wi-Fi that you initially connected it to, it will always try to connect to that. So you need to power on your transmitter a reasonable distance away from your existing Wi-Fi. So it essentially fails to connect and starts the backpack Wi-Fi manager again. So all the next steps are going to be done on the computer. So we'll move over to there now and come back here to wrap up. As mentioned, the first thing you want to do is connect to the ESP Wi-Fi manager that is the Wi-Fi backpack built into the module itself. It's an open network and doesn't require any password. Once connected, browse to 192.168.4.1 and this will take you to the Wi-Fi manager splash page. And what you want to do is use this first option, configure Wi-Fi. And scan for your networks. I've created an SSID specifically for this task, but all being well, you can see your home Wi-Fi here. So you can select that, which will pre-populate the SSID field. Just simply enter the password for that network and press save.
You need to give this a few moments whilst it connects to the wireless network. Once the module has connected to your Wi-Fi, you actually have two methods of updating the firmware over Wi-Fi. You can either use the traditional browser-based update as you would in any of the ESP devices, or in a very similar way anyway, but you can also flash it directly using the configurator tool without having to go to a browser and upload the firmware that way. To get to the update page in a browser, you need to go to http colon forward slash forward slash elrs underscore tx dot local and it will take you here. You can see some details about the firmware itself and some logs. And then you can see the update portion for both the firmware itself and for the backpack firmware. Primarily, we're going to be dealing with the STM32 firmware updates. But if there are any backpack updates in the future, this is where you would do that. In order to upload it, we do actually need to first build the firmware using the configurator tool. And as I mentioned, you can also use the configurator tool to flash straight to the module without needing to go to the browser. And that's the method that I'm going to use here as it simplifies it a little. So with the latest version of the configurator tool, as always, the current version is 1.0.7 and the release that just came out a few days ago is 1.1.0. And this is the version that fixes some of the issues I was having when I first got the module. So of course we first need to select the correct target. So the Namimno flash 2.4 gigahertz. And then the device itself. Now we're using the TX here. And then you have your flashing method of either the ST link. If you were to open up the module and do it that way or via Wi-Fi, which is the method that we're going to use now. Select the options as you would with any other device. And because I'm going to use the configurator tool to flash it, I'm just going to hit the build and flash. If you wanted to use the browser, you just hit build. Then select the file once it is built and hit upload and flash. This may take a few moments. And there we have a successful flash. Whether you use the process to build and flash the firmware through the configurator directly or build the firmware in the configurator and flash via the browser, you should hopefully now have an updated JR module. You should now update any receivers you have to the same version. And these can be done using the standard methods for either beta flight pass through or via Wi-Fi. I believe there is gonna be a backpack firmware update as the current implementation is somewhat of a workaround in that it flashes the bootloader and then the actual firmware in the same step but it may be in future that it just corrects the backpack to start at the correct address by default and then flash the firmware portion without the need for flashing the bootloader as well. From an end user perspective there isn't going to be any difference visually, but this will probably be a cleaner way of doing things in the back end. Now that the firmware situation is somewhat sorted, the only negatives I can say about this module are SMA connector, which you can actually replace. You can get an RP SMA pigtail, open it up and actually connect that instead. I believe it's a 90 degree connection, so Take a look before you order anything, if you are going to do that change. And of course, as I've mentioned, the lack of USB port for 
an additional simple way of flashing the firmware as currently the only simple simple way is via Wi-Fi but if you're having any issues with that you can't do it near your router or anything like that it may be a bit of a pain so I guess I can recommend this as a module there's certainly nothing really wrong with it it works perfectly it looks well built and functionally operates perfectly it's currently the only module that does go up to one watt I believe whether that's something that really is necessary, I'm not sure, but the capability is there. The antenna, as I've mentioned, is great, or at least so far in my testing, I've not had any notable issues with it. So I hope this was useful. I'd just like to quickly thank Andy RC for providing this module for testing, and I'd like to thank everyone for watching. So until the next one, cheers.